Welcome back, MTG Joe here. We're here for another installment of the weekly meta breakdown where we look at the best performing decks for a specific format on the MTG Arena ladder. Um, this particular video is for standard best of three, but if you're new to the channel, what we do here, every week we look over for best of one and best of three, each of the arena formats, what are the top performing decks in terms of win rates uh, across platinum to mythic rank. Um, we do this through uh, Untap GG, which you see on the screen. It's a companion tool that runs alongside your arena client, tracks your win rates, loss rates, um, gives you deck collection syncing to tell you what decks you can build, what wild cards you're missing, uh, has a whole bunch of cool in-game overlay features as well to up your game, uh, see your draw percentages, what's left in your deck, stuff like that. So really helpful. Um, a lot of the functionality is free to use. Uh, the link is in the video description below. Um, if you click the link, it just helps out the channel as well. Um, in addition, I'll paste all these uh, deck lists into the video description, so if you just want to export it to Arena, you can do so. But signing up with Untap is easier, because then you can just copy to MTGA and just import it right away. Even when you're in the client, there's the ability to import as well directly from there. Uh, so less kind of bouncing back and forth, copying and pasting. Um, so we will jump into best of three. Um, quick favor if you can. Um, if you can, drop a like and a comment on the video. It goes a long way to helping out the channel. If you enjoy this type of content, we try to come out every week with more, more and more in-depth, kind of highlight changes, stuff like that. So greatly appreciate it if you can as well. Um, yeah, so let's jump into it. This is the week of May 30th to June 6th, Platinum to Mythic rank. We're looking at 15,000 matches. Remember, matches, not games. So matches are best of three. So you can have between 30 and 45,000 games of Magic being played. Um, and what we are looking at, jumping into it, the top performing deck on the ladder this week is Esper Midrange. Uh, this is a 68% win rate deck, and it is the Esper deck that we saw from the set championship. And it's really a black-white midrange deck with uh, Kaido in the main, as well as uh, Spell Pierce, and then sideboard you get counter spells. Um, and you're really just using all the best midrange threats, Wedding Announcement, uh, Wandering Emperor, Soren, Lulth, just Planeswalker package. Blue mana also for Rafine, Seer, Scheming Seer in the main board. Uh, this just kind of helps you with the wrong half problem if you're drawing multiple Planeswalkers. Uh, helps you dig for specific answers. You can like toss your underdogs in the graveyard and get them back. So there's a lot of value there. So it's kind of a mid-range aggressive deck. A lot of good removal spells, Infernal Grasp, Vanishing Verse, Meat Hook kind of scattered in there as well. Your sideboard, Raven Feebleman, for the white-based creature matchup. Uh, Mono White, this deck, Runes, stuff like that. Stroke and Negate come in in these like bigger mid-range decks where you want to hit against like the Hinata Goldspan Dragon decks, also a very good option. Bank Busters when you want to grind. Um, so think slower matchups where you're going to be trading a lot of one-for-one one removal, the game's going to go long. You want that extra card advantage. Meat Hooks for creature decks that you want to sweep up. And then Archon is for the, um, is it Goldspan Dragon combo deck, the Hinata deck, uh, the Runes deck, anything that's looking to play multiple spells per turn. So Esper midrange up and running. Next up we have Grixis control, Grixis midrange. So it's probably more of a controly deck. Um, and really you're using the combination of Corpse Appraiser to eat at your opponent's graveyards, as well as provide card advantage. You have Galazeth Prismari, which ramps you, but also lets you tap treasures or artifacts to uh, get extra mana. And you can get artifacts with stuff like Blood Tithe Harvester, making blood tokens, the treasure tokens off Fable of the Mirror Breaker tokens, your Bank Buster now also taps for mana if needed, so kind of cool innovation there. Some counter spells, make the Spear Negate, Disdainful Stroke Spell Pierce in the main, a mix of removal spells, Voltage Surge, which could do deal two to four damage, depending if you have artifacts, a Braids, you have the combination of Fable the Mirror Breaker and Blood Tithe Harvester, which can be acting as a every turn removal spell. Sorry, it's joking a bit. Um, Bank Buster for card advantage, Meat Hooks, and then uh, one of the cool things you can see in this particular deck, if I want to build it, I am missing three Xander's Lounge in my collection. In order to do so, I would have to craft it. I have 29 rares, so this is what I was saying with the collection tracker. You can kind of see what you can build, what you can't build. Uh, your sideboard, you got some specific counter spells for like the runes matchup, uh, hand hate in there, mix of removal spells, counters, We're seeing a lot of those similar kind of effects. You also get access to Evelyn the Covacious as a way to kind of grind advantage. Um, you do have eight vampires in the deck as well, so you can trigger off that. 
So for the long drawn out games, it's a flash threat that lets you accrue card advantage off both players' library. Running up next, Jund Midrange, 57.6%. And this is a very similar, you're seeing a lot of the cores of these decks built around like a Fable the Mirror Breaker style effect or Rafine, really just card selection, efficient removal, stuff like that. So we're seeing similar packages of removal spells. We're seeing the Blood Tide Harvester Fable package. Um, this version here, you get access to Riveteer's Charm, which is a clean Soul Shatter style effect for um, Goldspan Dragon, can target graveyards, uh, can also give you card advantage. You have Briarbrack, Briarbridge Tracker as a four power attacker. Um, that also comes with a kind of pseudo card advantage, uh, replaces itself with the treasure with the clue token. Um, you have chariots that can copy clue tokens. Unleash the Inferno can kill a creature and like a fable or something like that. Ren, Lolf on the top end as well mixed in there. And again, just very similar sideboard kind of packages. Your anti control, your removal, your grind cards. Um, really just kind of extra copies of what you need depending on the matchup. Also, some more graveyard hate and unlicensed Hurst, and it's a rule for like the weenie style go wide matchups. Next, we have Boros Aggro. So, Boros Aggro is one of the highest win rate decks I've seen in a while in Best of One. Uh, today was actually at 75% win rate in Best of One. Um, it doesn't translate as well to Best of Three because we're seeing a lot more of these decks prepared as these mid range kind of grind them out value decks. Um, but very similar uh, package, we're seeing the one of Wandering Emperor in the main here over a Bloodthirsty Adversary. And then in your sideboard, just kind of specified removal in the grindier matchups you have Showdown, Hand Hate and Spellbinder, Chandra's for value as well, and Angel Fire Ignition when you want to kind of race. We have Orzov Control. Um, so this is kind of another take. So we saw Esper being a lot more predominant with access to counter spells post board that helps in a lot of the rough matchups like the is it based matchups um, you have silver Squ silver quill silencer as a way to kind of tax your opponent and give you card advantage even just the two mana three power body uh, very much akin to like what we see with the blood tithe harvester a three two mana three two with upside uh, luminar kind of goes in there redain to tax the big mana spells a janjo for kind of card advantage, you get to restore some of these creatures. Wedding announcement, we're seeing Henrika do its best. Um, oh, what's his name? The 3 4 vampire from Pioneer. Uh, I'm forgetting now, blanking. But um, you have Elspeth in here that can fetch a bunch of the small stuff, um, give you like relevant keyword soup. Lulth in there, good removal package mixed in there. Um, and then very similar kind of package, you know your anti-control cards, your flexible removal cards, uh, your anti kind of stormesh cards, graveyard hate, and another sweeper and crippling fear that you know you could be selective and name human here. I believe it keeps all your stuff human, human, human. Um, so a lot of your stuff kind of stays around um, post that sweeper as well. And then lastly, it's not showing up right now on Untapped, but a deck that's been doing very well in the standard challenges on MTGO, so Magic the Gathering Online, um, is this uh, Goldspan Hinata deck. So I think like the top eight or like some crazy amount was just this deck. Um, so it's basically just a Hinata Jeskai control deck with gold spans. You got Fables in there, and really what you're doing is getting reduced cost Magma Opus. Uh, it could cost as little as two mana with all the targets from Hinata. Um, so this is a very popular deck as well. So I'll link that if you want to import. You can see these challenges, but we see you get basically three, four, so three in there. This one's just a is a deck, but very similar. Um, yeah, so three of the top eights. Then we're seeing a couple different teamer versions as well here with Titan of Industry. Galaseth and Goldspan, kind of a teamer control treasure style deck. Another Hinata deck. So a lot of these Hinata decks are showing up here. So I wanted to feature it as well. While we're not seeing a huge representation on the arena ladder necessarily, on the standard challenges, which is like a kind of, think of it almost like an arena open style, like higher pay in um, with like bigger payouts. Um, we're seeing the Hinata deck being featured a lot more. So in any case, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, we will be back for Explore and Historic as well. As always, if you do enjoy this content on the channel, like I said, it's greatly appreciated if you can. 
drop a like, comment, and if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to the channel free and lets you know when we come up live with any new video. Um, we've been playing, oh, actually one thing I usually do show. Um, so I haven't been playing much standard, but with Untapped, like I said, you can track all your win collection. I usually kind of highlight in these videos what I've been playing. I actually got Mythic in three days this month. I came in at 49 Mythic. Um, and it was a combination of Explore Mono Red, which the video is up on the channel. Uh, a little bit of the surprise Titan deck in Explore as well, the turn three a Titan of Industry. And then I was actually playing a lot of best of three Esper Alchemy, which is really fun. Um, so those are always on my channel, like you can see here. I put my profile public, so if you want to see any of the decks that I play, win rates, stuff like that, you can take a look um, and kind of go from there. Yeah, so I'm going to wrap this up. Catch you next time. Be safe out there. Have a great one.